Uh, as you know, we continue to see uh, cases increase. Pismo Beach continues to be one of the lowest cities uh, in the county, which is encouraging, <clears throat> but we all do see increased infections occurring as a result, starting back from Halloween to Thanksgiving, and we anticipate uh, we're seeing trends in other areas of increased numbers due to Christmas, and so uh, we do expect that. We currently have 50 uh, people hospitalized with 14 in the ICU, which are high numbers for us, uh, but our capacity is at 31.4%, and that is one of those key numbers. Uh, as you recall, many of you lobbied the city council, and the council heard you and uh, participated in a uh, county-wide request of the governor to break us out of the Southern California designation. The governor has not honored that, uh, nor has he had any mention of it at all, uh, which is unfortunate. But nonetheless, our ICU percentage is at 31.4% available, uh, whereas you have zero uh, in most of Southern California. And so that is a key metric we're keeping an eye on. Uh, the vaccines are in the county. They have been rolled out to uh, nursing homes, uh, firefighters, healthcare professionals, doctors and hospitals. 2,214 Pfizer vaccines have been uh, given, administered, and they will continue. And so I think we'll be seeing uh, more of the vaccines in the nursing homes, health, I think continued uh, frontline emergency services workers, uh, and uh, some discussion of uh, teachers, uh, will be some of those next and uh, the age population. And so as I have more information on that, we'll share it. But that's where we are as far as um, COVID in the area. I'll have the uh, chief give a situational update uh, towards the end of the call uh, as far as uh, complaints and issues of operations. But on the whole, uh, things seem to have been pretty calm over the holiday. Many of you may have seen that. Uh, we certainly have had less people in the community and so uh, that could be challenging for some of your businesses, but the community itself has definitely gotten uh, a break. I do want to speak a bit about uh, rain. And, and so there's some uh, both sides of the coin on rain. As many of you know, uh, we did have rain last week. We were supposed to have a great bit of rain uh, beginning uh, today and through this early week that is dissipating. The good part of that is that we've had the light rains and Shell Beach, uh, north, of the, uh, north of the city, uh, and in the hills where we had the fires are slowly revegetating. And so the type of rain we've had with some of the sunny days actually has allowed uh, many of the plants, you can see the sprouts, which shows that the rootstock is still holding the soil, which is really good uh, for any threats we had of potential uh, mudslides or flooding. And so that's very good. And the staff has been monitoring that closely. The flip side of that is we're only at 13% of normal rain. And we've had in our reservoir, Lopez, 2.54 inches of rain as of July 1st. And that is uh, definitely a challenge to our water supply. And this is why this city continues to work diligently with Rio Grande, Grover Beach, and Oceano on Central Coast Blue, which is our recycled water project. It is my hope that in the next uh, six weeks, we will see the environmental impact report finalized for that project and the memorandum of agreement between our three cities and the Oceano Community Services District uh, ratified so we can move forward on our final uh, request for funding as we move forward to design and construction of that project. And so I, I did want to share that we uh, are aware we're watching water and rain closely and uh, it's not looking good as far as water supply this year, which again is why we need continued support for Central Coast Blue. I think those are uh, many of the things I did want to share. Uh, I will open it up to questions. Uh, I think that's most important. But Chief, why don't you give us a quick situational update on what occurred in the community over the holiday and anything you're hearing that would be helpful. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Lewis. Um, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody out there. Uh, I got started off with, with a very peaceful season. So uh, we thank everybody uh, that was either in the community or came to our community uh, for keeping. We, we had one or two exciting days uh, over the last two weeks. But other than that, uh, calls have, have actually gone down for the first time in about four months. And so uh, it, it's, it's gotten a lot quieter. On the complaint front, uh, I am aware that that ABC has sent out uh, a few notices. And so again, it looks like those were non-disciplinary, just a, uh, hey, we saw this type thing. So if any of you have any questions on that, please feel free to call us. We do stay in contact with ABC, um, the alcohol beverage control uh, to make sure, you know, we know what's going on within our own city too. So uh, don't hesitate to call us on that. Uh, other than that, again, we appreciate the patience. 
Um, you know, your police department is in a bit of a difficult situation here where we do have these orders and, and we are kind of keeping an eye on things just to make sure that there's no egregious violations to the state order. Um, and we have not seen uh, any yet. Uh, there have been one or two that have been close and we've made notifications to the owners and the businesses on that. Uh, again, your police department really would rather not take any action on these. So if everybody can just kind of go with, with what we're doing, uh, we'd appreciate that. And just to refresh your memory on that, um, it's not that your police department's turning its back on any violation of any sort that would come down from the state, local, or our own municipal code. It's just where we focus our efforts and what, what is priority and non-priority. So um, with that being said, uh, please continue to do the best that you can, keep people separated as best you can. If folks are dining in the, the parklets or out on, on uh, open air balconies and things like that, that's, that's okay. Um, and let's not, you know, get into a situation where we, we ruin it for other folks. So, uh, with that said, thank you again for, for all of your efforts out there. And we, we hope January is a little bit busier. Thank you, Chief Miller. And Gordon, do you have anything that you wanted to add? If not, no. Okay. Um, so let me, before I open it for questions, I do want to just share two other things. The way I see it until vaccinations reach a significant threshold, which is likely uh, springtime sometime, I, I think we're going to be in this where we are for a, a long while. I think you saw the governor extended the stay at home orders. And I think that these will continue for a good long while. And so you all need to be prepared for that. I did not, I, I hesitated to mention, I did send over the holiday uh, information on the federal stimulus. If you did not get it, please let the chamber folks know or myself. It is very important that you see there is a new tranche of PPP loans that will be forgiven. And in the hospitality industry, you qualify for three uh, times as opposed to two times payroll for several months. The, the uh, Congress did recognize that. And so there is a new tranche of money individual uh, stimulus payments, as many of you have seen in the news, are arriving, or have already arrived or are arriving, which really money in people's pockets, your employees' pockets. There are also a significant, uh, there's a significant increase to the tax benefits to you as business people in the new stimulus bill, as far as tax credits for your employees. It was, uh, I want to say, uh, $10,000 a year, and now it's $10,000 a quarter going into 21 that you can have as tax credits for uh, employee salaries. And so consult your accountant, consult uh, whoever it is at your business that's following these things. But there is a significant amount of resource in the federal stimulus bill that was signed by President Trump last week. And so that will be very helpful to many of you as we navigate the next few months of continued shelter at home order. And so I think that's very important. I wanted to point that out. The other thing I wanted to point out, I would be uh, hesitant if I didn't, is I want to thank uh, Lisa our chamber chairwoman for a terrific year of service. And she's actually been longer than a year, but I see that she's on the call. She's been a joy to work with. Lisa, you've continued to just pour your heart into this chamber and so much effort you've given uh, at, at no uh, compensation and your efforts on behalf of our community from your city and the city council are greatly appreciated as you are ending your term as our chairwoman. And to Valerie, I look forward to working with you as does the city council and the staff as you become the chamber of commerce chairperson uh, we're very grateful for you to step up. You two have shared a great deal of energy and commitment to the chamber with Lisa as a partner, and we look forward to that partnership continuing. So uh, with those comments, I'll open it up to dialogue. I know that's the most important part of this call. Uh, and so Jorge, why don't you open up our line and we'll see if there's uh, anyone who wants to share a comment or questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, Lisa, go ahead. Hi, uh, Jorge, Jim, Chief, and Gordon. Happy New Year to all of you. So Jim, I want to thank you. I mean, you really touched my heart by, by thanking me. It's been my privilege to be the, the chairwoman for the Pismo Beach Chamber of Commerce. I couldn't be more proud of a chamber and a city and working with all of you. So it's, it's been my pleasure and I'm not going anywhere. So, <laughs> so don't kick me out of the city yet. Um, yeah, we still continue to do our beach cleanups every Sunday. Um, which I, I had a just a gal from Fresno that asked me, she said, do you work for the city? 
And <laughs> I said, no, I said, I, I'm with the Chamber of Commerce and we just come out here every Sunday to clean. And she was so thankful and, and many people are thankful. So it's my pleasure. Um, I, I get great joy out of it. And thank you for, for recognizing our chamber as, as be, you know, we all are volunteers with our chamber and we all really care about the city. It's not just me. It is definitely a whole, a whole group of us. So thank you for making our jobs easy. I appreciate you. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your, I watched the, uh, I did watch your Thursday um, year end wrap up. I thought that was great uh, with you and Valerie <laughs> and kind of recapping a very challenging year and watching you two <laughs> reminisce and have a little fun while you're at it was, uh, it was neat. Yeah, thank you so much. We've enjoyed the Learning Curve Summits. We've done those now since um, March, if you can believe it, every Thursday we're on. So for those of you, for those of you Thursday at four o'clock that don't have anything else to do, <laughs> <laughs> for some fun entertainment you can watch Val and I. <laughs> Perfect. I will Thank share you. you bet while we're if there's any other questions there have been questions offline about um, just the parklets in general and what we're doing with them and I, I think again the city council many of you I think most all of you I can see who's on the call watched the meeting of the city council on a Friday several weeks ago it is the city council's intent to be as business friendly and as supportive as to all of you as they can while maintaining health and safety. And we still believe being outdoors and distance is the safest place for people to be. We don't wanna be pushing people to take out and have parties of 10 to 15 people in homes. That is where people are getting sick. We must continue to be vigilant. So the city continues to support outdoor dining and parklets for takeout service only. We've talked about that, whether they're private or public, uh, and, and so we're trying to be flexible. I know some of you had, had questions if you were closed, uh, what's gonna happen to your parklet? Well, we're, we're gonna see what happens in January, uh, so there's still time, but we're just trying to see uh, how we work through this together. And so, you know, parking hasn't been in demand on Pomeroy and Cyprus uh, a whole lot, so we're gonna kind of keep an eye on that and our parking metrics to see, but for now, we continue to see that there's value to the parklets to each of you. I know to some of you, the parklets are a challenge, uh, but on the whole, and this is where we appreciate our Chamber of Commerce relationship, we need to hang in this and get through this together and just continue to show grace to each other and kindness and help each other through this so our downtown economy survives. And that's what we're trying to do. And so the city council, again, is very open to hearing from you and, and to doing what we can to be responsive. But the city is certainly trying to give grace and patience during this time. I hope many of you have felt that. Again, if you have specific concerns, uh, let me know. But as far as the parklets go, we're trying to give all of you a chance uh, to, to make it and to hang in there. So I did want to make that statement. I do see something in the chat. Uh, it was from Valerie. Well, Happy New Year to you as well. Um, are there any other comments or questions? Okay, well, you know how to reach us. Uh, Jay Miller, G. Jackson, Jay Garcia, J. Lewis at pismobeach.org. And hopefully this call was helpful. Uh, if there's any breaking news, we will certainly have one before the next month. Uh, but I think the big news this month will be how quick we can get the vaccine out in our county, what our ICU capacity continues to be at. We will continue our push uh, though, again, I, I don't think this governor is interested in separating uh, us from Southern California region, but we will continue to push for that. And we will continue to push out any information we have on federal stimulus dollars from our lobbyists. And so when you see something from Thorn Run, which is something I sent out to all of you, I think two weeks ago on the stimulus bill and on vaccinations, I hope that was helpful. That comes from our federal lobbyists and we'll continue to try and get that information to you as we can. So thank you all for your time and for tuning in. I wish you a good week. And uh, where we can help, please ask. Have a great uh, week and happy new year, I guess. 2021 has certainly got to be better and hopefully less interesting. So take care, everyone. Thank you. And we'll uh, see you in the community.